Thank you very much. Um, what a disappointment for everyone to know that <clears throat> all of your work's accomplishment can be summarized by saying, he's given a TED talk. <laughs> and charming, exactly. My, my children will know I have a legacy because of TED. Um, vast topic. Let me start here. There is two churches, okay? And on one side of the church is the church of the National Statistic Office. And they've been practicing their craft really officially for about 100 years. And they've, you can date it back with William Petty in the 17th century. But that's one church. The other church is big data. OK, so let's look at the first church real briefly. Um, they are orderly. The data is highly curated. It's in nice rows and columns. They know what the data is. They've tested it. They've refined their models. It's very classical. In fact, it's classical music, and it's beautiful to the ear. On the other side of the church is big data. It's new. It's untested. We don't really know all the biases and limitations. It's not really been tested that well. And in fact, we know that there are serious problems with it, but it's just totally different. It doesn't sound quite good. In fact, it's a cacophony. It's punk rock. Okay. And anyone with a wit, I would say, knows that, of course, there's this golden mean. We're going to reach the point in which there's a Goldilocks approach in which there, we're not going to have one or the other, but we're going to have both. Sure, that's obvious. But what that actually means is that this highly refined, beautiful palace of official statisticdom is going to have to accept the punk rockers and set, accept Fid Vicious into its hallowed halls. And they're not going to like it. OK, so what does this mean specifically? Today's statistics, state statistics, embody two assumptions. The first one are technical assumptions. What is the data that we can collect? Right? And the second assumption is, what do we need it for? What are we trying to measure? So take GDP. We measure it based on output that has a monetary value, because it was created in the 1930s to understand whether New Deal policies were working. And the easiest thing to measure in economics is things with a dollar sign next to it. OK, now it's, it's based on lots of estimations, right? Because to measure every single grain of corn is really, really hard. You can't do it. Big data comes along. And let's leave just the specifics of GDP, but just look at big data. Suddenly, the cost of measuring things and processing the data changes. So what we measure, and, or how we measure, and how we process it can change, too. We, can, we don't have to deal with models and estimations. We can go for the actual number of figures, sure. Also, what are we trying to measure? If we're trying to measure an economy that looks like it did in 1930, we could do that. Problem, it's not 1930, right? So much more of our economic activity is intangible, we have to measure entirely new things. So how do we understand consumer confidence? The reason, the way that we do it in the United States, and there's, it's, it's broadly based similarly, is through surveys around the world. We ask consumers, are you more likely, in, in short, you ask, are you going to purchase things in the future or not? OK. Maybe we should measure it through people's fitness tracker and their biochemistry. Now, of course, today, fitness trackers don't measure biochemistry, but let's, in five or 10 years, they will, right? So, uh, so maybe we can identify consumer confidence not by what people say they're going to do, but what their physical you know, biosystem suggests that they're more, most likely to do because we can run the correlations against it. These are the sort of things that we can play for. And if we do so, what we find is this, that big data sources are more timely because they can be released sooner about a better frequency uh, than traditional, uh, traditional statistics. They can be more granular. They can identify the details that get missed in our traditional models. And they can be more accurate. They can be closer to the ground truth. And if we're going to play for this new universe, then it requires a few changes from national statistical offices. First, they may have to recalibrate their roles to see themselves as curators of private sector data rather than the ones who actually collect the data themselves. They'll probably do both. But they'll have to add that first mission, uh, more so than they have already. The second one is that we might have to think about a world in which we count actual figures rather than deal with estimations and models. And the third one is that the data should be released at the frequency that it makes most sense to release it, not at the convenience of the data gatherer. So why should un unemployment be released at a monthly rate when it can be measured on a daily rate? These, if policymakers think that that's the appropriate frequency with which the data to be released. Maybe it should be on a per hour basis. Who knows? But let's open up that conversation. 
And with that, I look forward to hearing what my co-panelists have to say. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kenneth. I think that uh, my comment earlier was through envy, actually. Most of us would have loved to have had the opportunity to give a TED talk. So thank you very much for some rich uh, discussion to start us off.